anticipation, awareness, accountability. He was a player who was amongst the league leaders in takeaways, shorthanded goals, and plus-minus rating. He was a player who gave constant pressure on the forecheck, but on offense, once he had the puck, good luck trying to dispossess him. A player who had to endure two heartbreaks in back-to-back -back seasons, only to return stronger to win that elusive Stanley Cup the very next year. Standing at 6'1", 210 pounds, playing on right wing, he's Hose, Panda, Oh my Hosa, Marion Hosa. Just on the right point, hammers a shot, here's Hosa, the rebound, scores! Hawks win! Hawks win! Marion Hosa's first Blackhawk playoff goal! It's a game winner in overtime! Marion Hosa was born on January 12, 1979 in Stara Lubovna, Czechoslovakia. Dad was a former hockey player and later became the head coach of the Slovak national team. Mom was a clothing designer, and like many hockey moms, she made sacrifices to drive young Marion to early hockey games and practices, and it was they who taught him to respect the game, to play the right way, and that hard work is the key to fulfilling your wildest dreams. As the family moved to Trenchin, Hosa began to play hockey as he drew inspiration from Wayne Gretzky, Mario Lemieux, and Yaramir Yager. In particular, Yager's exploits in the cup runs in 91 and 92 served as a reminder that it was possible for a kid from faraway Czechoslovakia to one day make it into the NHL. So young Hosa worked harder and harder as he first donned the Dukla Trenchin jersey before being drafted in 1997 in the first round, 12th overall, by the Ottawa Senators. As Hosa made the jump across the pond, he was immediately thrusted into the Senators lineup but he would only last seven games as he would be sent down to the Portland Winterhawks where he got acclimated to North American ice as well as a winning mentality as the team would go on to win the 1998 President's Cup as Western Hockey League champions as well as capturing the Memorial Cup. In the championship game, Hosa would suffer a serious knee injury that kept him sidelined heading into the following season and his rookie season in the NHL would officially start in December that year, and even then, he would finish second in Calder Trophy voting as the Rookie of the Year, scoring 15 goals and 15 assists. Hosa would end up playing 8 seasons in Ottawa, and it was met with highs and lows. Playing with the likes of Alexei Yashin, Jason Spezza, Zdeno Chara, and Martin Havlat, Hosa would reach 30 goals in multiple seasons, scoring a career-high 45 goals in the 2002-2003 season. And it was in this season in which Hosa guided the Sens to the third best offense in the entire league as they won the President's Trophy as the team with the most regular season points. The Senators would lose in the Eastern Conference Finals in Game 7 to eventual champions, the New Jersey Devils. Hosa was determined to one day return to the Conference Finals, and he later will, but sadly, it would not be in Ottawa. The Senators at the time were in the middle of a financial crisis, and they knew there was no way they could afford Hosa, who was heading into restricted free agency. The case went to arbitration, and Hosa was later dealt to Atlanta for Danny Heatley, superstar for superstar, in a move that shocked the hockey world. The Atlanta Thrashers were heading into their sixth season, never once making the playoffs, and Hosa's arrival saw an increase in the team's fortunes. Playing alongside Ilya Kovalchuk, Hosa would lead the team in scoring in his second year in Atlanta, getting to the 100-point mark in the final game of the season. More importantly, he was able to help a struggling Thrashers team, which were perennial pretenders, to the playoffs in the 06-07 season, as the team finished third in the East. And although they would get swept in the first round by the Rangers, fans in Atlanta had finally tasted success. As a three-year contract in Atlanta was nearing its end, Hosa was asked by management if he was considering signing an extension, and Hosa said yes as long as they promised they acquire some superstars. Knowing that that was not a possibility, the Thrashers dealt Hosa at the trade deadline to the Pittsburgh Penguins as they were preparing the young team for a deep playoff run, and Hosa would register 26 points in 20 playoff games as the Pens would lose a heartbreaker in Game 7 of the Stanley Cup Finals. 
In the following offseason of 2008, Hosa became an unrestricted free agent as he received long-term offers for an incredible amount of money from Pittsburgh and Edmonton. Mario Lemieux even personally phoned Hosa to see if he could keep him in Pittsburgh, but Hosa had already made up his mind. In the finals, he got to witness playing against Detroit's veteran players, how they played the game, how they created a winning mentality, and he was intrigued. He wanted to learn from the very best so he would ultimately turn down all that money, all that term, to sign a measly one-year deal in Detroit. He had agreed to an $8 million deal that year, but team captain Nick Littstrom was only making seven and a half, so the GM had to check in with him to see if he's okay with that. And Hosa, after finding out that was the case, offered to sign for $7.4 million, just slightly below the captain. And that's how he endeared himself to the team and fans alike. The year in Detroit will be best remembered for Hosa's failure in capturing the Stanley Cup, as his Red Wings made it to the finals that year, but ended up losing in seven games against his ex-team from Pittsburgh. Fans dubbed him the Sad Panda, as he became the common denominator of the back-to-back -back Stanley Cup Finals losses. But even though he became the laughingstock of the entire league, his year in Detroit proved to be instrumental in his quest for Lord Stanley, as he would take the lessons he learned there to Chicago, where the 30-year-old would sign as an unrestricted free agent in a 12-year deal. But make no mistake, Marion Hossa had finally reached his complete form, and in the next few seasons, he would distinguish himself from a pretty good hockey player to a hockey demigod. He was intelligent beyond belief, as he could project what the other team would do as if he's got them under mind control. He was tenacious, as he used his meticulous attention to detail in his back check to cause turnovers for a scoring chance the other way. He was able to bring it on every game he played as his contagious work ethic rubbed off on even the laziest of teammates. But perhaps most importantly, even though he was not yet a champion, the year in Detroit had taught him how to become one. In my episode on Pavel Datsuk, I spoke about how he excelled at shifting his weight to protect the puck, even from players much larger than him. And after each practice, Hosa was able to learn from the Magic Man as Hosa later became known for this skill. He learned the leadership aspect and winning mentality from Lidstrom, Chelios and Zetterberg, and even Chris Japer, who taught him how to keep up the intensity shift after shift. In Marion Hosa, my journey from Chenchen to the Hockey Hall of Fame, he recalls how in Detroit, he was sipping wine with Lidstrom and Chelios as they were taking care of their kids. But in Chicago, they were the kids. The young team, which consisted of the core of Jonathan Taves, Patrick Kane, Patrick Sharp, Duncan Keith, and Brent Seabrook, wow what a stacked team, and they had been knocking on the door in the Western Conference. But they were still missing one key ingredient, veteran presence. Enter Hosa, as he brought the leadership, the drive, the commitment to leave it all on the line every single shift. And it is with this mentality that was the catalyst in the Chicago Blackhawks advancing to the 2010 Stanley Cup Finals, Hossa's third attempt at it in as many seasons. Third time's the charm, and Hossa would finally capture the hardest trophy to win in pro sports. As Captain Sirius went up to collect the silverware, after a brief celebration, there was really only one player who was gonna get it next. Sad Panda no more. Hosa would spend eight seasons in Chicago, as he was a vital part of the dynasty they built there, winning the cup again in 2013 and 2015. His two-way play was amongst the league's best, and it's unfathomable that he never won a Selkie trophy for being the best defensive forward. I suppose traditionally, those who win the Selkie are center icemen, so being a winger, he really didn't receive the recognition he deserved. The 2016-27 season proved to be Hosa's last, as he had to cut his career short due to a skin order called eczema. He missed the following season and the doctors wanted to put him on meds that might cause kidney damage. Hosa, who thought about his young family, decided not to undergo treatment, effectively signaling his retirement. Recognized for his contributions to the game of hockey, he would be inducted into the Hockey Hall of Fame in 2020. And just a couple of years later, just last month, the Chicago Blackhawks would retire his jersey, ensuring he is the first and only player to don the number 81. 
Hosa is currently a full-time dad for his three daughters in Slovakia, while his wife tends to the yoga studio she opened. Just as she had supported him all these years with his dream, it's his turn to support her. Marian Hosa will be remembered for his three consecutive trips to the Stanley Cup Finals, losing the first two, but finally redeeming himself on the third try. Being able to transform himself from an exciting offensive prospect to a complete player who played a mighty two-way game, that takes a special character. As Joel Quinville said it best, some players play the game to score goals or to put up points, but Marian Hosa, He played to win, and he was going to do whatever it took to make that a reality. He was the perfect hockey player, no maintenance, smart, comes to play every night, plays the right way, plays in all situations. And to perfectly exemplify his will to win, Hosa has seven hat-tricks in his career, none of which occurred as a member of the Chicago Blackhawks. He gladly, willingly sacrificed his offensive game to suit the team's needs as a two-way forward. Hosa wasn't the most physical player, but he was willing to do whatever it took to help his team. In Game 1 of the 2014 Western Conference Finals against the LA Kings, Dustin Brown, who was known for his humongous hits, was looking to make a big statement. But Hosa was the one who ended making the statement himself. And it is with this I'd like us to take a lesson from Marion Hosa. Everyone saw him as an offensive superstar at the start of his career, but he kept redefining himself as so much more. The steps he took in his career was all about becoming a better hockey player, and this mindset has allowed him to transform into the player he later became. Intellectual growth should commence at birth and cease only at death. Never stop learning. Thanks for watching. Bye.